In the next episode of Probably True Solar Stories, we continue the story of two neighbors who are part of the solar industry. One is a large-scale utility solar developer. The other is a medium-scale thief who agreed to liberate the solar developer's solar panel shipment from a U.S. customs warehouse. As with all good solar heist stories, the heist was less than perfect, but it was successful in the end. In part three, it's a year later. The big solar project installed with the stolen solar panels is almost complete, but there's a complication. Somebody knows about the heist, and that somebody now wants a favor that can't be refused. Welcome back to episode 10 of Probably True Solar Stories. I'm your host, Tor Solar Fred Valenza, and you're listening to the last episode of season one. I'll have some thoughts about that milestone at the end of the show, but right now we're back to where we started, continuing with part three of our solar panel heist story. If you missed parts one and two, you probably should listen to those first. Otherwise, you'll be missing a lot of important information about our two main characters and the reasons behind the solar panel heist. In part three, it's a year later. Charlie's solar project is in the last stages of construction. Meanwhile, Maz's new home solar business has grown. These two are not only neighbors and solar business associates, they're now friends. What both of them don't realize is that a mutual friend knows about their solar panel heist. And now that same someone needs a favor that Charlie and Maz can't refuse. Ready for part three? Okay, here we go. Roll that la-la music. The Solar Heist, or How I Got Into the Solar Business, Part 3, The Favor, by Tor Solar Fred Valenza. Okay, let me be clear about this. I didn't know. Everything about that day was a total surprise. It was a little over a year after the solar panel heist, and I was really enjoying my life. Thanks to Charlie... I'd invested in a legit home solar business. I was minimizing my special transportation business and my special mushroom business. But can we not go there? You want to know what really happened that day? This is what happened. It started completely normal. Charlie and I walked to Phil's for our usual morning cup of muddy, rich, strong black coffee. We weren't being followed. I might have stepped back from my former career, but I would have known. Some skills you don't forget. It was just a normal Tuesday morning talking about the solar biz. How's the project going, Charlie? All good. We're about a month away from PTO. Why does solar have so many acronyms? Instead of PTO or permission to operate, why not permission to turn on? Like a light switch. English. Beats me, Moz. Ask the AHJs and PUCs. I laughed. In the last year, Charlie had taught me a lot about the solar industry. The AHJs are the authorities having jurisdiction. They're your local permitting people from the county, the fire department, the building department, who require their own special sauce of solar regulations and codes. The PUC? That stood for the Public Utility Commission. They're the state utility regulators who make the statewide solar rules and policies. By the way, I need a favor, I said. Charlie looked at me. Legit? Yes, legit. I told you. I'm shutting all that down. The solar business is good. It's going to grow for the next 30 years. I'm just having one problem right now. You need panels. Bad. I told you to stock up, Moz. I did. Business is good. I'm out again. Come on, Charlie. You gotta know somebody. I've got ten home projects I could start right now. But I need the panels, man. You gotta know someone. How many? Call it a thousand, I said. Moz. You've been on the solar coaster for a year now. You know all the distributors. Why do you need my help? Because they want volume. We're doing 10 or 15 jobs a month. 7KW to 10KW jobs. That's nothing to them. With your utility scale buying power, just buy me a little extra, will you? You know I'm good for it. Okay, what kind of panels do you need? Thank you. 375 or 400 watt mono or better with 20% or more efficiency. 20% efficiency meant it would capture more sunlight per panel, which meant I'd need to install fewer panels. Fewer panels meant fewer trips to the roof, lower labor costs, and other costs. In other words, 
more power per square inch for the homeowner, and more profit for me. Win-win. I'll see what I can do, Moz. Thanks, Charlie. You're a prince. Coffee's on me. We arrived at Phil's, and I was about to buy our cups of coffee when I saw Richie. He was old, nearing seventy, with gray hair, wearing a suit with suspenders. Seeing Richie and his suspenders at Phil's was like entering a funeral home and seeing the deceased in the casket wearing pajamas. You know the guy, but it seemed unreal. It was inappropriate. It was out of place. This was not the place to do our kind of business. This was Rockridge, not Richmond or San Leandro. I wanted to tell him to leave, but I was with Charlie. The thing to do was to ignore him and talk on the phone later. But Charlie screwed up that plan when he shook Richie's hand. Richard, said Charlie warmly, I didn't know you were a Phil's fan. Who doesn't like great coffee? Richie turned and looked at me blankly. Richard Prout. He held out his hand and smiled. I shook. Richie may have been pushing seventy, but he squeezed my hand like a rock. The kind of pressure that says shut your pie hole, or else. Massimo Botticelli, I said, like the painter but I just paint houses. It was my standard joke, like I was meeting Richie for the first time. He seemed to like the act and smiled as if he'd never heard it before. Richard is the asset owner of my big solar project that I'm finishing, said Charlie. Max is my neighbor from across the street. He's also in the solar business, but just on the residential side. Small world, said Richie. You two living next to each other and both in the solar business. With the passage of the IRA, the industry's expanding fast, said Charlie. What brings you to Rockridge, Richard? Oh, I was supposed to meet a friend, but he canceled at the last minute. I'm heading back to the office. I'll see you over there, Charlie. Nice to meet you, Massimo. Keep up the good solar work. Thanks. You too. Richie picked up his paper cup of fills and left. He's your project owner? I asked Charlie calmly. That's the one. I'm just the developer. I'm like the conductor of the Solar Construction Orchestra. Richard's the real money man who owns the theater and collects all the money at the box office. And his tax equity financing partners, too, of course. I nodded, but didn't say anything. We got our black drips and headed back. Charlie could tell I was upset about something. What's wrong, Maz? You think I'm going to mark up your panels? I wouldn't do that to you. I still owe you one for last year. Besides, we're friends. We were. A year after our solar panel heist, Charlie and I were friends. So would it be better to tell my friend that his project owner had another name? I knew him as Richie. In my world, I knew a lot of Richies. None had last names, but you had to tell them apart. So I gave them a last name. Richie Cars was a car mechanic and an international car recycler. And by that, I mean he stole cars and resold them overseas. Potato, potato. Richie three times was a loan collector that you didn't want to see more than two times because if you did see Richie three times, he was no longer there to collect money. You'd be lucky if he just collected a finger or two. This Richie, Charlie's Richie, I called him Richie Dumpster. How do we know each other? Well, as you know, I'm in the trucking business. I own a few roll-off trucks. Those are the kind that pick up and drop off dumpsters. Sometimes with my trucking business, Richie Dumpster would ask me to pick up a dumpster behind a warehouse at 2 a.m., then I would drop it off at a specific spot at one of his landfills by 3 a.m. It was an easy $10,000 NQA. Yeah, that's right. I got acronyms in my world, too. NQA meant no questions asked. All dumpsters smelled bad, but these dumpsters always had a certain ripe, rotting meat stench that made me gag with every pickup. Did Charlie know about Richie's waste removal and landfill business? If he didn't, would it be best for him not to know? I had to ask. Charlie, by any chance, is your big solar project built on a landfill? Yeah. How'd you know? Landfills, brownfields, and Superfund sites are all great land for solar these days. They're near utility infrastructure, so that's great. Plus, there's a bonus 10% investment tax credit on top of the standard 30% tax credit. Richard heard about the tax benefits and put out an RFP. I won the bid. Why? I just smelled something rotten on Richard, but I couldn't quite place the smell. I looked at Charlie. Based on how we met with our panel heist, I wouldn't be surprised if Charlie knew about Richie Dumpster's other businesses. But Charlie didn't act scared. He should have been. I was. But I didn't think this was the time to tell him. First, I had to see what Richie Dumpster wanted. 
Maybe it was just an NQA pickup and delivery. I sure hope so. I waved to Charlie with my Phil's mug, and we parted ways to our respective homes. As soon as I walked in the door, I saw a crushed Phil's paper cup crushed under the seal of my garage door. It looked like garbage, but I knew it was a note. I tugged it out. Scrawled on the outside, it said, Roll-off job at 1 a.m. Next to that was the address of a landfill where I'd previously made Richie's dumpster deposits, and that was now the site of Charlie's big solar project. Usually, Richie Dumpster contacted me through George Oneway. George's last name was Oneway because he would only call you from an unlisted number, so there was no way to call George back. If Richie was trying to meet me directly at Phil's, it meant that George Oneway was either dead or running. I wondered if Charlie and I should do the same, but giving up our lives in Oakland was a lot to throw away on an assumption. I wanted to believe that this was just a friendly job, the same as any other job with Richie who paid on time and paid very well. When I arrived with my truck at the solar project site, I saw that Charlie's car was parked at the office. He was either already dead or a living, breathing part of this meeting. I looked around. The solar project site was lit up with security lights. That was a good sign. If something were going down, it would have been dark. Still, that didn't mean that the site was safe. Big solar farms like this are built on flat land, but it's not like you can see across the whole plot. Sticking out of the dirt like square lollipops were rows and rows of single-access solar trackers with solar panels. Trackers are becoming standard equipment for utility solar projects because they make the solar owner, in this case Richie, more money than a fixed tilt system. So even though the site was lit up, any dope with a scope, could be hidden behind one of those solar panel tracker rows and placing a red dot on my head when I left the truck. Thinking about that, I unconsciously wiped my forehead, as if I could wipe away any sniper dot that might have been there. The only thing that came off was sweat. Finally, I stepped out of my truck's cab and knocked on the office trailer door. La 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 la, oh, oh, oh. la 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 la. Charlie greeted me with a smile. Having known Charlie for a year, I knew his genuine smiles and his we're screwed smiles. This was the latter. Hey, Maz, if I knew you were coming, we could have carpooled. He opened the door wider and I stepped inside in front of him. I was hoping he could see the bulge of my 9 millimeter Luger that was tucked in my belt behind my shirt. Richie Dumpster sat behind a desk, still wearing the same Richard Prout suit that I saw him wearing at Phil's. His gray hair was perfectly combed for business. Other than Charlie, no one else was there. That was a relief. It was another good sign that this was just a business call. A well-paid business call. So, I said, should I call you Richard or Richie? I generally prefer Richard, but old friends call me Richie. You've called me Richie, Maz. I've never called you Massimo, so let's not be formal. Let's be friendly. Sounds good to me. Have a seat, said Richie. Having a seat would make it difficult to grab the gun behind my back but I did as ordered. I didn't see a gun on Richie, but I felt like he had one. Richie folded his hands on top of the desk. This was another indication to us that he was not a threat. By now, you probably know that when Charlie had his solar import problem last year, I recommended you. Yes, yes, now I know. Small world. So just to clear the air, Maz, Charlie knows that I own several other businesses including several landfills that are all getting full of garbage and other toxins. They need to be repurposed. As Charlie may have told you, building solar projects on landfills is a very profitable business. Not only do I get the tax credits, I get a 30-year revenue stream selling the power to the utility at a fixed price. Every watt of solar power we produce, ka -ching. It's like a laundromat money machine. If you maintain it well, it runs itself and you can collect a steady income. And this particular solar money machine is about to turn on in a month. PTO, I said. Permission to operate? Correct. So how can I help? Well, according to my records, Maz, you have delivered four dumpsters to various parts of this former landfill. I know the exact coordinates of where those deliveries were made, just in case I'd ever have to move them. Richard took out a large paper ledger from his desk and opened up a bookmarked page. 
And now my excellent record keeping is paying off because a certain friend of ours named George has been arrested by the FBI. I'm told he's going to talk. And the only way George is going to reduce his sentence is if he can prove that there are cats buried under this beautiful, productive, money-making solar farm. Cats? asked Charlie. This is about cats? It's an acronym, Charlie. It stands for certain awful things. Thank you, Maz. Yes. Certain awful things. Things like green shag carpets, bell-bottom jeans, and disco balls. Many awful things get thrown away and buried in landfills. In any case, these things, these cats, are toxic. So in order to avoid a fine, I need to move them to a proper area. And that's where you come in, Maz. I need some of your very special authorized transportation. Sure, no problem, I said. I know how to use an excavator. I could dig this up myself. What's Charlie got to do with it? Excellent question, Moz. You see, Charlie is not only an NBA, but he's also an electrical engineer. I'm not. I only know where the cats are buried. Of all the people who are part of this solar project, Charlie's the only one I could trust to help you dig up those cats without delaying PTO or getting you electrocuted, neither of which I want. You're welcome, Charlie said to me. I turned to Richie Dumpster. So, Richie, let me get this straight. You want me and Charlie to dig up your four cats by tomorrow morning and move those cats to another location. That's it. Precisely. And for this noble service, you both will receive $25,000 in Bitcoin each. Half now, half after the move. After that, you will both return to your solar day jobs. Richie. Yes, Maz? Why should Charlie and I trust that we won't be left permanently at the new landfill where we're dropping off those old cats? Because I'm reasonable, Maz. I have no reason not to enjoy your company in the future. I know both of you. I know your families. By gum, you two live across the street from each other. Plus, thanks to this very lucrative solar project, you both have a reason not to want to alert any authority having jurisdiction if you know what I mean. It's just another moving job, Maz. And because I don't want my solar project or you to be damaged, I've asked for Charlie's help. It's as simple as that. You're good with this? I asked Charlie. Sure. Uh, I'm good with this. This is one night. And then everything's back to the solar business. Right, Richard? Right, said Richie. Okay. With the blueprints and ledger in Charlie's arms, we brought the excavator to the first set of coordinates. I don't like this, Charlie. If I'd known Richie was your solar project owner, I never would have taken the special authorized transportation job. It's okay, said Charlie. Charlie, you're in denial. Richie is not a sweet old man with suspenders. Richie kills people. I know, but you heard him, Maz. He has no reason to kill us. That he knows of. What's that supposed to mean? What? You said he has no reason to kill us that he knows of. Oh, just an expression. Forget I said it. Charlie, what do you know that you don't want me to know? But, Maz, you don't want to know, so I'm not going to tell you. Screw that. I want to know. Are you skimming off, Richard? Jesus, Charlie, stop playing with me. What do me and Richard both not want to know? Give me your gun. What gun? The gun behind your back. You practically twerked it in my face, you naughty boy. I know. You were trying to protect me in case Richard shot us. I noticed these things. Thank you. But I know your temper, so give me the gun. Or don't give me the gun. Just take out the bullets, then I'll tell you. I took the 9 millimeter out from behind my shirt and then took out the clip. Charlie looked around, making sure we were alone. Then he looked at the blueprint. The electric cables, they're fine. You won't be electrocuted, I promise. It's night, so none of your panels are energized anyway. Plus, all the cables are above ground here. I just told Richard you might be in danger so that we could be alone. Charlie, what don't I know? Well, you don't know that I'm an informant for the FBI and that I need to get pictures of these cats. Now you know. You're the rat? Ironically, yes. I'm the rat that's going to dig up the cats. Squeak, squeak. But it's worse than that, Maz. How could it be worse? 
Again, I'm only telling you because we're friends, and eventually you're going to find out anyway, so it'd be good for you to know. What? Spill it! Well, I'm not just a solar developer, and I'm not just an informant. I'm actually an undercover FBI agent. There. Then Charlie hugged me. Man, that feels good. Thanks for letting me get that off my chest, Moz. It wasn't loaded, but I still had my 9mm. I could have cracked it over his skull and told Richie everything, but I couldn't. At least not until I learned how much Charlie knew and how fast I could get out of town without alerting Richie and the entire FBI. And that's a wrap for Season 1 of Probably True Solar Stories. Clearly, there's going to be a Part 4 of the Solar Eye story, and probably more. In fact, Part 4 will be the first episode of Season 2. Let me just say that this storyline is completely unrealistic. Large utility-scale solar projects built on landfills are incredibly complicated to construct, and the financing involves banks and tax equity investors and many accountants. There are also nosy environmental regulators, permitting authorities, and county meetings that would scare away any organized crime investor. So why am I writing this ongoing storyline? As I said from the beginning, I'm trying to get the solar industry into mainstream pop culture. And let's face it, when you look through the most popular TV shows and movies today, many are mysteries, thrillers, and crime-related action plots. So if writing a solar crime story is what it takes to get solar into the modern pop culture, here you are, world. This is your solar mystery action crime thriller that I hope will also be entertaining. Of course, this first season of Probably True Solar Stories wasn't all about Maz, Charlie, and certain awful things, or cats. We had a variety of stories and genres. We had a sci-fi solar story about the future of solar installations. We had a haunted house solar story. We had a tongue-in-cheek solar superhero story. You also heard a children's story with Winnie the Pooh going solar. They also wanted to reflect reality, so I wrote two stories that depict modern solar life. One was about a young solar family with a pigeon problem. The other was about a senior citizen that wants to go solar but can't. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to Season 1. These stories will always be here on your favorite streaming service, so please do share this podcast with friends, family, teenagers, and pets who like a good story. Maybe they'll learn something about solar and be inspired to go solar, or maybe they'll transfer their current skills to the solar industry. For sure, we're going to need a lot of new solar workers in the coming years. As for the Season 2 launch date, fill out the newsletter form at probablytruesolar.com to be the first to know when we're ready to go. Thank you again for listening. This is Tor Solar Fred Valenza. Please follow me on Twitter at Solar Fred or at Prob True Solar. Probably True Solar Stories is a production of Unthink Solar PR and Communications. Be bold for solar, stand out, and educate. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>